Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Thanksgiving is a time to reunite with loved ones, but for one family in Florida, their holiday would never be the same. Christopher Thomas, who went by Cole, was about to graduate from the University of Florida when he dropped out and then moved to Minnesota to become an electrician. On November 24th of 2016, Cole and two of his co-workers, Julian Valles and Jeremy Carpenter, road tripped from Pine Island, Minnesota to Durham, North Carolina. At one point in the drive, Cole got out of his car in Benson, North Carolina and disappeared. He was last seen alive in the early morning hours of November 25th of 2016. Cole's family in Florida found out that he was missing and traveled to North Carolina. One of two men traveling with Cole allegedly told police that Cole had a panic attack and just walked away and disappeared. The men, however, kept offering up different stories. Julian, one of Cole's co-workers, reportedly sold drugs and took the trip down to North Carolina to buy more. The alleged drug deal supposedly freaked Cole out, and Cole and Jeremy got out of the car to calm down. Surveillance video shows that the two men were walking through Benson at around 1 a.m., Jeremy reportedly told Cole's father that they ended up at a church and that Cole left to use the bathroom but was never seen again. State and local officials began investigating the missing persons case. In 2017, Julian and Jeremy, along with two other men, were arrested and charged with felony concealment of a death in connection with Cole's disappearance. Prosecutors also charged Julian, Jeremy, and one other man with obstruction of justice. In September of 2019, the Johnston County District Attorney's Office dropped the charges against the four men, but said that the investigation remains ongoing. Cole is reportedly presumed dead, though his body has never been found. Let's look back at the case of a young man who seemed to vanish into thin air on Thanksgiving. He's the last person you would expect to go missing in the middle of the night in a strange town far from home. He got out of the car by himself and just took off. 22-year-old Cole Thomas disappeared without a trace and with a story from his traveling companions that defies belief, raising only deep suspicion among Cole's loved ones. He hadn't used his bank cards. He hadn't used his phone. He hadn't used anybody's phone. He hadn't contacted me. I feel like something's happened to her. There's not one second, not one minute, not one hour that I don't think about it. Cole Thomas, a clean cut kid with a super clean record. He might have gotten a speeding ticket and that was about his criminal history. An honor student in high school with a scholarship to the University of Florida. He could be very ambitious whenever he had his mind set to something he would definitely get it done. I thought he was really funny, and I thought he was pretty attractive, and he was pretty muscular, so I liked that. With a rock-solid family behind him. We're all very close. We're a huggy family. Cole, he has the best hugs. And a young woman who loves him. He would do anything for anyone. I mean, who's not gonna love a person like that? But his parents say they are concerned when Cole suddenly drops out of college and heads up to Minnesota. He's traveling with his friend Stephen and plans to work with him as an apprentice electrician. We were upset that he decided to, to take a break from school, but because he was so close to finishing. But that's what he wanted to do, so we supported him in it. But Cole keeps in close contact with family over the next few months. His aunt Darla remembers the last time she talked with him a few days before Thanksgiving. When he called that Sunday night, he said, hey, Aunt Dar, you told me to keep in touch, so I'm calling you. Later that same week, he sends a text to his dad on Thanksgiving Day. He just said, happy Thanksgiving, I love you, Dad. And I text him back and say, I love you, too. Early that Thanksgiving morning, Cole volunteers to help drive two of his coworkers on a long distance trip more than 1,000 miles south from Pine Island, Minnesota to Durham, North Carolina. His family does not know the men he is traveling with, and they have no idea that he's even on the road. He knew both of the guys in the vehicle with him for two and a half weeks, approximately. I didn't know he was making a trip to North Carolina. 
Later that night, this chilling surveillance image is recorded in a convenience store in Mount Olive, North Carolina. It's one of the last times Cole Thomas is seen alive. Three days later, Cole's on-again, off-again girlfriend, Gabrielle, says she gets a Facebook message from a mutual friend. And they are words that leave her in stunned disbelief. She wrote me in and she said, um, Cole's missing and we think he's dead. My heart literally sank to my chest. Gabrielle gets Cole's family on the phone. And my mom comes outside on the phone and said that she had gotten a call and that he had went to North Carolina and that he was dead. And I said, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't feel that, I don't believe that. Moments later, a second call from the police in Benson, North Carolina, about 30 miles from where Cole has been seen on that store surveillance camera. They told me that he was registered as a missing person. And I didn't, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. My, I was shaking. Cole's dad arrives from running errands to his stunned family. I knew something was wrong when I got out and they said Cole was missing. He went missing Friday morning after Thanksgiving from one to three sometime. His parents drop everything and head to North Carolina to search for him, a 500 mile drive on a holiday weekend. We weren't thinking the worst. I think we were praying for the best. The moment they get to Benson, they march straight into the police station at about 3 a.m. looking for answers. There was a sergeant on duty that let us in, and uh, he immediately starts calling one of the guys that Cole had been with, starts getting information from him. They walked over to the officers and told them that my son got out and had a panic attack and took off. I don't think they realized how serious it was. I think they thought it was just a, a, a man jumping out of a vehicle. Just jumped out of the vehicle and disappeared? That's the story Cole's travel companions report to police, but it makes no sense at all to Cole's family. They told several different stories in the beginning. Cole Thomas is missing. A 22-year-old highly regarded young man who's never seen a day of serious trouble in his life now vanished into the North Carolina night, leaving his two co-workers without a clue. And his loved ones terrified and baffled. Or he wouldn't come back to the car, so they sat there and waited on him and he disappeared. But as Cole's father, Chris Thomas, is about to find out, it's not that simple, not by a long shot. And supposedly he got out of the car, took the keys, and had a panic attack and left. But later on, we found out that that's not what happened. Cole's dad is now on a mission to find out exactly what happened to his son, and he's tracked down the last two people known to have seen him. Julian Vallas and Jeremy Carpenter, both co-workers at Cole's new job in Minnesota. They reportedly invite Cole to go home with them for Thanksgiving. Here's the catch. It's more than 1,100 miles away near Durham, North Carolina. The reason the story was was to go to Thanksgiving with one of the co-workers family go to his house for Thanksgiving. It's about a 17 hour drive and Jeremy Carpenter reportedly doesn't have a license. Friends say Cole wouldn't mind driving, but wonder why he never told anyone at home about the lengthy road trip. They, those guys asked him to help drive his car. He probably would. Honestly, I didn't even know that he was taking this trip. Um, I, the last time I talked to him, was the day before and he never mentioned it to me. I think he thought that we would probably get pretty angry if we knew that he was so close. So that could have been a reason why he didn't mention the trip. They reportedly left before dawn on Thanksgiving morning. This is one of the last known images of Cole at 11.30 Thanksgiving night. It's from a surveillance camera inside a convenience store 100 miles south of Durham. I knew definitely him and they showed him in a store in a town. From there, the three men reportedly head north again toward Benson, North Carolina, 35 miles away. Supposedly headed back to Durham to Julian's house. But Jeremy Carpenter reportedly says they made one more stop along the way, and what he allegedly tells Cole's dad fills him with fear. Julian was going to North Carolina to purchase drugs. Now, Cole's dad is starting to wonder, was this really a Thanksgiving homecoming, or was his son duped into an organized drug run? They got there and pick, picked up whatever they picked up, based on what I've been told. 
he was selling drugs on that job in Minnesota and went back to North Carolina to get more. Cole's dad finds out Julian Vallis is no choir boy. Vallis has been in trouble with the law before, even spent some time in jail. And court records in Florida show in 2009 he was charged with a conspiracy to traffic in methamphetamines and trafficking methamphetamines. Those charges were dropped, but that doesn't give much comfort to Cole's dad, especially when he claims he talked to Vallis on the phone after Cole disappeared. He wasn't very cooperative. I don't know, every time I would say something, I'll give him a serious question, he would act like he didn't hear me. Crime Watch Daily also reached out to Julian Vallis and Jeremy Carpenter, but got no response. Police have not charged either one of them with drug trafficking related to Cole's case. But Cole's dad says Jeremy told him his son wanted nothing to do with the reported drug deal that night. It was supposed to be methamphetamine, supposedly. Cole's dad says his son got caught in the middle of a terrifying transaction. I believe they went to a to get drugs. I believe he got strip searched and Cole freaked out. They all got strip searched and Cole freaked, freaked out. Cole's dad says he was told the guys were strip searched to see if they were wearing a wire or carrying weapons. Once the deal was done, Cole couldn't get out of there quick enough. They left. After they got the dope, he was nervous and didn't want no part of it. And Jeremy said his hand was shaking on the steering wheel. Cole thought somebody was following him from the guy's house they had just come from. And then Jeremy said as we kept driving, we thought maybe it was the law, cops. Cole's dad says Jeremy told him Julian Vallis was in the back seat holding the drugs while Cole trembled behind the wheel. He, Jeremy looked back there and said, hey, we'll go to jail if we get caught with it. Jeremy said he grabbed it from him and threw it out the window. Cole pulled up this intersection and was nervous. And Jeremy told me him and Cole got out of the car and was walking off. And Jeremy was trying to calm Cole down. After that, Jeremy reportedly says he and Cole got out of the car and left Julian angry in the back seat. And sure enough, a surveillance camera capturing what Chris believes is his son and Jeremy walking through Benson shortly after 1 a.m. Chris confirmed to police the man on the right in this still frame from the surveillance tape is indeed his son. And it's the last known recorded image of Cole Thomas. I said, I seen it after they enhanced it. You still couldn't hardly see his face, but it was his clothing that he had on in the Mount Olive surveillance video. According to Chris, Jeremy says that they keep walking until they stop near a church, and that's where the story spirals into the realm of the unknown. He said Cole had to use the bathroom. I went around the back of the church to get on my hands and knees and pray. And I said, pray for what? He said, because I threw the dope out the window and these ain't good people. He got up, went around the front of the church to look for Cole. He didn't find him, so he said, well, maybe he went back to the car. So Jeremy said he started walking back towards the car and about five minutes into his walk, he heard two gunshots. He said, I hope that ain't what I think it was. And I said, well, what did you think it was? He said, well, I thought maybe somebody shot Cole. Chris says he believes much of what Jeremy is telling him about what happened to Cole. He said, I got about a block from the car and Julian seen me. And he said, hey, where the hell y'all been? If my boys would have seen you out here in this neighborhood, it wouldn't have been good and there wouldn't have been nothing I could do about it. He told me right then, Mr. Chris, I'm telling you, I know that the boys come to that neighborhood and done something to Cole, I just didn't see it. For now, that's the only account Chris has about the last time his son was seen. I know them guys have done something. It's just a matter of time. But Jeremy has a lot of people on his Facebook who seem to believe he knows more than he's revealing. And Chris is hoping to hear a lot more from anyone. And I know something's happened to him. I think Cole is dead because he hasn't talked to anyone in five months and he's been missing for this long. I just would like to be told, you know, if we checked into this and we ruled this out, you know, something, just anything. But Cole's family and several newfound friends in Benson are staying on the case and busy searching the area around Benson from top to bottom for any sign of him. I'm, I'm a diehard for the, you know, everybody has a chance to still be some kind of miracle story. Um, and without a body, you still have hope. If he is deceased, which, you know, a lot of people believe he is, um, we just need, he needs to be found. He deserves to be found. They are determined to get answers. I miss Cole's smile and his laugh. It was just very comforting to me to see his face, to just have him now 
just gone. And Chris Thomas says he has only one objective. I just want to find my son. I just want to know where he's at. Somebody please tell me where he's at. I'm not going to stop searching. In an email response to Crime Watch Daily, Captain Greg Percy of the Benson Police Department says that they have extensively interviewed both Jeremy and Julian and they have been cooperative. But they are not releasing many details while the investigation is underway and are not naming any suspects at this time. If you have any information on what happened to Cole Thomas, you can call the Benson PD at 1-919-894-2091.